so this is the first lecture of engineering mechanics and let us see what engineering mechanics basically mean the definition goes like engineering mechanics is the branch of physical science that deals with the dynamic disturbances in state of rest or state of motion so first of all there are two words here first is physical science second is dynamic disturbances now what this means is physical science means that something that we can interact with okay uh, something that we see or uh, we can touch or like that that would be called as a physical science and what do you mean by dynamic disturbances now see dynamic disturbances is if someone comes and pushes you so you are disturbed from your place that would be called as a dynamic disturbance but let's say that you uh, you sometimes eat something you know and it causes uh, uh, it causes your stomach upset or maybe it causes some disturbance inside you that would be called as a chemical disturbance which is happening inside you so are you understanding what is dynamic disturbance and what is chemical disturbance Sim similarly in structures also we can have a dynamic disturbance that is happening that is something is physically coming in contact with something or we can have some chemical disturbances that are happening within the body of that structure itself right so in short a gist of engineering mechanics would be it's all about the interaction of forces for example let us consider this that a person is trying to push something very heavy okay and he wants this heavy object to move in this direction but for some reason it is not moving so it is in the state of rest so we are actually again deciphering this uh, definition itself here we understood that it is a physical science we understood that it deals with dynamic disturbances but it also says that it deals with the state of rest or the state of motion this scenario is the state of rest because he is trying to put he is trying to apply a force on this and he wants it to move but because this is very heavy it is not moving so what are the forces that that are acting on the body and what are the forces which are uh, resisting that person from moving this the first force is the weight of the structure itself the weight of the structure and to support it we have a reaction from the ground this is the newton's third law that every action has equal and opposite reaction but this is a downward force and this person is applying a horizontal force so what is which is that force which is stopping this person from moving this body again that that is the question still because this this weight is vertically downwards if this person is applying a horizontal push like this we need some horizontal force in the opposite direction so that this body is not moving so what is that horizontal force that is being applied it is the friction at this ground and between the ground and the body right so this was just an example in which we can see that how various forces come into picture when a simple action of pushing is done on a particular body and moreover if that body is not moving once this body starts moving what we can say is that the force that is being applied by this person is is greater than this frictional force so he overcame this horizontal frictional force and then the body started moving in the forward direction another scenario here we can say that uh, this person he is kicking the football and he is a famous footballer mr ronaldo so uh, we can also decipher or we can dissipate the forces that are acting on this football once this mr ronaldo once he kicks the ball is it going to go on, go on and is it going to remain in air forever no the football has to come down and moreover if you see then uh, the way he kicked the ball the ball is not turning also apart from moving forward it is also turning so what are those forces which are causing the ball to turn to the left side and what are the forces which are causing it to move ahead and to remain in the air and what are the forces which are going to bring it down everything uh, is covered in engineering mechanics and this example is the state of motion okay now engineering mechanics is uh, divided into two parts first is mechanics of solids and second mechanics of fluids 
the one that is uh, we are concerned with is mechanics of solids mechanics of fluids will be uh, specifically for civil engineering students and mechanical engineering students they will learn this mechanics of fluids in the later semesters so roughly what is there in mechanics of fluids let us say that we have this tank which is full of water inside that water this small particle of water what are the forces that will be acting on that small particle of water uh, if if the if there is a moment of water in this direction what will be the forces that are acting on that small particle and this is just a very very tiny small example of mechanics of fluids mechanics of fluids is a vast a subject and uh, many people do specialization also into it so it's a very interesting subject but it is sadly it is not the matter of discussion for today's lecture we come to mechanics of solids mechanics of solids is further subdivided into two parts first is mechanics of rigid bodies and second is mechanics of deformable bodies what is the difference between rigid body and deformable body so first let us understand what are deformable bodies the word deformable means that uh, if you apply a force on it it can change its shape right for example clay you must everyone must have played with clay so if you apply a force on the clay is it going to retain its shape it it is going to change right so that we can call as a deformable body so for example this is a beam and uh, there are two supports here which are uh, on which the beam is being placed when this force w comes on this beam for a deformable body what will happen is let us say that we have these two points okay we fix these two points on the beam so for deformable bodies what will happen is the beam will get deformed okay and after deformation let us now compare the position of these two points so see you can clearly it is visible that these points after the beam has deformed they displaced from their original position so this is one of the very important considerations of deformable bodies that the particles do not remain in the same position after the load is applied onto them so a deformable body represents the actual condition of a body which deforms when a force is applied to it and practically all the bodies that you see in the nature are deformable bodies your own body itself you you take your one hand you pinch yourself see what will happen your skin will deform isn't it the particles will displace from their original position but why if if this is the actual scenario if deformable bodies are the actual case then why do we need rigid bodies isn't that a question if these are the actual if these represent the actual cases then why do we need rigid bodies rigid bodies are those bodies which do not deform and their particles will remain in the same position even after the load is applied so these rigid bodies can be applied to a certain cases for example if there is a very huge stone and you climb that stone and you stand on the stone are you going to deform that stone no your weight is like very less for that stone to get deformed correct so in such cases that stone can be considered to be a rigid body but there is also one more use of rigid bodies uh, the de definition of rigid body says that it is an idealization or it is an assumption okay so this rigid body is just an assumption and i will clarify why we have to assume uh, this rigid body later on so it is an idealization or assumption in engineering mechanics for the body that does not deform under loading okay this is what i had explained but why do we need exactly this rigid body definition c for example this is a rigid body okay let us say that this beam is a rigid body and this beam is a deformable body and we have applied both of them with a inclined force inclined loading so how this deformable body will get deformed see after deforming it will it will take a shape like this but what you can see is that after deforming 
the load the position of the load has also changed not only the particles will change its position but the load will also change its position okay and for a beam uh, to for to analyze a structure we need to understand what are the reactions so you see these are called as supports so we need the reaction forces or we need the reactive forces to analyze any structure we need them but how are you going to analyze a structure whose load position only you don't know see before deforming the load position was here but after deformation it came here how are you analyze a structure whose load position keeps on changing so for that case for finding the reactions we need to assume the body to be rigid we need to assume that this load does not change position we need to assume that the body does not deform or or in simple cases we need to assume that the body is rigid at least while calculating the reactions okay so furthermore in deformable bodies the load assumes a different position after deformation which is tedious to compute and thus reactions are found assuming the body to be rigid next mechanics of rigid bodies are further subdivided into statics and dynamics and mechanics of deformable bodies are divided into theory of elasticity and theory of plasticity so this entire thing of mechanics of deformable body we are not going to learn in this semester because this thing comes specially to civil engineers and mechanical engineering students so they will be learning this as well as mechanics of fluids in the subsequent semesters what we are interested in this semester is particularly statics and particularly dynamics so statics is something uh, that does not move that is called a static so engineering mechanics of those body or of those loads which are not moving which are stable or the bodies which are stable is called as statics dynamics on the other hand is mechanics of moving bodies all right and dynamics is further subdivided into two parts kinematics and kinetics both the words kinematics and kinetics they sound similar but there is a difference in between them kinematics deals with the motion of the body without referring to what caused the motion for example a vehicle is moving and i want to study all the characteristics of its movement when i say the characteristics of its movement meaning that uh, i want to study its velocity profile i want to study its acceleration profile uh, how it is accelerating what is uh, how how it is uh, how is the velocity differing or how is the velocity changing but i don't want to know what exactly caused the motion of that vehicle i am not interested into that whereas in kinetics it deals with the motion of the body knowing the force that has caused the motion for example a football that has been kicked so for the football that has been kicked i need to know what caused the what caused the motion of that football it was a kick of the footballer right and i want i want to know that how strong was that kick or at what angle he kicked it all those things i need to know that comes into kinetics so that's it for this lecture in the next lecture we'll be learning more about the engineering mechanics till then take care thank you